All right, gang, welcome to OBS Outpost. This is Dan, and today we're going to be installing these 2012 GM truck seats into a 97 extended cab. Uh, we'll be showcasing our Gen 3 brackets. Uh, the Gen 3 brackets basically will fit all 2007 to 2013 full size GM trucks, Tahoes, SUVs, Escalade, Sierra, everything that's a full size truck. These seats are all going to be identical. The jump seat is only going to come out of the trucks. We're going to be doing that today, obviously, in the extended cab. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to do this in a single cab as well. So let's get started. So I just want to show you what we're going to be using today to do this install. This is our Gen 3 seat bracket set. We saw this on our website, www.obsoutpost.com. We've got the seat bracket set for the driver and passenger, and then we've got some jump seats uh, over here. One for extended cab, Tahoe crew cab, the other for a single cab. Uh, these are all steel brackets. Uh, they're laser cut for starters. They're CNC formed and then they're all uh, fully welded, all gusseted, very strong. This is raw steel right here. So this is exactly the way that you guys will get them when you order them. They're basically paint ready. You just wipe them down with some acetone. And what I recommend is getting a color that matches the interior of your carpeting. And color match them that way these brackets are going to look the best most guys paint them black or get them powder coated uh, but i like the color match the best so let's get to step one what we need all right the first step you want to take your seat and lay it on its back like you see here now your seat's going to have these brackets attached like this on all four corners they're going to have rivets through these holes right here you're going to need to drill the rivets out i'll put a link in the description on how to do this i'm not going to go over that today but literally just drill these rivets out. They take just a 30 seconds a minute for each one. You're gonna have eight rivets per seat, so 16 rivets need to be drilled out. Once that's done, you're gonna take your bracket. Now, this bracket's got the threaded insert option in it. You could just take a 5 16 nuts, nut and bolt. And if you get the threaded insert option, it just makes the install go a little faster. But the bracket basically, top hole, bottom hole, is gonna line up to this hole and this hole right here. So this would be an outer bracket, and then this one right here, because it's offset, it's going to be the inside bracket. You're going to do the same. So you got two options. You can mount the brackets to the seat first, and then mount them in your vehicle, or you can actually just mount the brackets in the vehicle first, and then mount the seat to the brackets. We're going to do that way today. So I got the brackets sitting in here right now. This is the passenger side. So for an extended cab, we're going to be using the furthest uh, holes apart the first one and the last one for the passenger side we'll be doing the same on the outside bracket the first one and the last one so here's the factory holes right here it's going to bolt right into the factory holes just using the factory 15 millimeter bolt that we took out when we removed the seat I'm going to put that in there like that Crank it down, and I'm going to do the same for this side. This side, you're going to have to use a ratchet. You just drop the bolt in there. I'll get it started by hand. Okay, I'll finish this up with a ratchet, and then we'll drop the seat in. So we went ahead and we just dropped the seat on top of the rails. I lined up the front holes with the front hole of the bracket on the inner bracket and the outer bracket and then I just kind of threaded, started threading the 5 16 bolts in by hand and then when I get to a point that I feel like I'm not cross threading, just go ahead and finish them up with the gun, bring the seat forward and then go ahead and do the same for the rear. Okay, for those of you going to be doing a jump seat, I'm going to show you how to install the jump seat bracket. Uh, we first of all need to prep the jump seat, so I turn it upside down. We've got six 10 millimeter nuts right here. Let's go ahead and get those removed. We need to remove the seat belt. The seat belt's held on by a T50. 
These are usually Loctite in from the factory. They're pretty tough to get out. I recommend using a breaker bar to get started with. And once you break it free, you can go ahead and just use your impact ratchet. I've already worked these loose. All right. Now that we've got this bracket completely detached, we no longer need it. We're going to take our jump seat brackets. So we put arrows, little stickers on the orientation of these brackets, how they're supposed to fit. This is the rear. This is the front. And you can see that they've got cutouts specifically for uh, the bolt holes, but also these like clips right here. These two notches right here or if your vehicle came with a factory center console, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. It would line up perfectly here. These two slots back here are for where the factory seat belt receiver buckle would have went. They were 18 millimeter, a big T50 Torxes like this. I go ahead and I replace those with 18 millimeter. It makes it easier to bolt in, but we'll show you that inside the vehicle. So let's go ahead. We Now with the front, you need to put the little 10 millimeters on up front. To tighten the bracket down just use a ratchet for this one the rear it's not as important on the extended cabs i do it because you've got the clearance on the single cabs because the bracket's so short you probably won't be able to reach your hand in there and why is it important well because you're going to use your new bolt to mount your seat belt back in so once this is bolted back in, torque down, that bracket's not going anywhere, it's solid. So let's go ahead and get the other one in and then bring this over into the truck and let's show you how to mount this to the truck. All right, so we're approaching the cab here. I just want to kind of give you a visual of where these are located. So these holes right here would have been where the seat belt buckles would have been for the factory seats. Now if your truck uh, had a council in it, you'd have two 10 millimeter holes like run right there and run right there for the factory, and that's where the slots were. This truck was a 60 40 seat, did not have a council. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start by lining up the jump seat, uh, the two slots on the back bracket over the these belt buckle holes right here. We're going to start with theirs, get those screwed down, and then we're going to have to drill some holes up front. Okay, so I got the jump seat positioned over the seat belt buckle hole and I already started inserting my bolt. Now I replace the Torx with uh, some 12 millimeters. Uh, just go to the hardware store. I just find it easier to use these. You can definitely use the Torx. I just find using this head a little bit easier. So I just started finger tightening this one. I'll do the same for the other side over there. Have to do that on the driver's side. Get these tightened down. And then I'm gonna come around to the front of the vehicle. And then, this might be hard to see. We've got some pre-drilled holes in the bracket right here. And another one over here. Or you could use the slots. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark these holes first with a marker. And then you're gonna take the jump seat out. And then you're going to drill holes down into the, through the trans tunnel put everything back and then run two bolts and two nut plates uh, to finish off the installation for the front back bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and get this rear one tightened down. I'll drill some holes for the front and then get that buttoned up as well. So we got the two different rear jump seat brackets for the Gen 3. We've seen the single or the extended cab get installed. This is for the single cab. Uh, the extended cab tahoe crew cab they all have that two inch drop off in the back whereas a single cab trucks are all flat floor so it's a much shorter bracket it's going to basically install the same way like the uh with the arrows pointing forward it's going to drop in there like that it's going to have where you you know do your um seat belt that but you're not going to put this one on the console the jump seat um, for installation. You're gonna actually mount this in the cab first, and I'm gonna show okay, you. So what we wanna do is just um, lay the jump seat in here like this. We wanna locate these dimples. There's gonna be four dimples right here. 
These two I already drilled out and you're going to have four holes in the bracket. Now you don't have to use all four, I just used the, the two rear. You're going to see that these holes are going to match up perfectly to that hole and that hole once they're drilled out. Just going to drop some bolts through there, go up underneath, add your nut plates, come back up here, uh, torque these things down, it'll draw the nut plate up, make it super tight. You can see the rear is pointing forward. Once this is tight and secure, then you're going to take your jump seat and set it on top of here. And then you're going to bolt in your seat belt, lock all that down, get the rear mounted up. And then for your front, uh, the front's going to land somewhere right around here. You're just going to drill two holes through your transmission tunnel. Mark those first, pull the jump seat off, drill, put the console back, and then run bolts through just like you did for the rear. And the jump seat will be done for a single cab. So one thing I want to cover with you guys before I forget... I get this question asked a lot is, you know, if you got a power seat, how do you wire it up? These Gen 3s are very simple. You've got a black with a white wire. I'm sorry, a red with a white wire and a solid black. Your black's going to be your ground. Your red's going to be hot. So when I'm installing these seats, what I'll do is I take a battery like this. Positive is all the way over here, at least on this battery is. And then I'll just take a spade terminal, put it in a negative right here. And then... So this way I can extend the rails. Remember I told you it's easiest if you put the rails all the way forward. So now I've got the rails all the way forward and the seat's powered up outside the vehicle. Again, red with white wire positive. Solid big black is the ground. And you can just use a little you know, cordless drill battery to put power to your seat while you're just getting this thing installed before you actually hook it up in the vehicle. Right, so I went ahead, uh, reinstalled the driver or the passenger seat, got the jump seat fully in, and I positioned my driver's seat brackets. Um, for some of you that may have taken notice of the back seat, that's going to be actually be a different video. That seat is a uh, part of the Gen 4 bracketry, 2014-2018. Uh, uh, that came out of a crew cab right there, so we will be offering that really soon. Um, but as far as this seat right here, the one thing that I wanted to point out, excuse me guys, is I told you on the passenger side, on extended cab Tahoe and Yukon, you're going to use the first and the last slot. Driver's side, we're going to use the first and the third. So it's going to be for all driver's sides are always going to be that way. It's a shorter configuration. It's around 10 and a half inches versus 13 and a half like the passenger side. If it's a single cab, it's going to be the first and third or the second and fourth um, depending on uh, what generation seats you have what bracketry um, but they all the good news is these brackets will work in every vehicle system. all right gang it's been a little bit of work but we are done and this thing looks friggin killer 2012 seats and a 97 truck they almost look like they're factory so one thing I wanted to do is answer a few questions. At least one is, uh, guys ask me, you know, how do these seats fit in here compared to a factory bucket? Uh, the height of these seats is identical to the factory. It sits right at 13 inches. The front does. They will dip down a little further. They sit a little deeper than a factory seat. So you will gain a little bit of headroom. Factory seat from the steering wheel to the back, when you're fully traveled in the furthest uh, rear position, you're going to be at 18 inches. So it's, I've actually positioned the seat here at 18 inches. We'll just verify it. So normally this would be the furthest back that you'd be able to go. So check this out. 21. So you're going to gain about 3 inches doing a Gen 3 swap. You're actually going to gain, gain 4 inches if you do a Gen 4 swap. That's the 2014 to 2020 seats. But for this one right here, these seats are really affordable. Obviously, they're older from 20, you know, 2007 to 2013. But I picked this pair up from a junkyard, and these are all leather. They came out of a Denali uh, Sear or something like that. And um, they were real cheap. So doing a swap like this, number one, it's going to make your driving experience better. It's going to overall increase the value of your truck. Uh, compared to your ratty old clapped out seats that uh, that you already had in there So there's a lot of benefits to doing a seat swap and the idea behind this is that anybody can do it These brackets are just pure bolt-in with the exception of drilling out some rivets This is really a simple job that 
anybody can tackle on. You don't have to hire a shop to do it. And you can get some instant gratification out of it, um, driving around in your truck feeling good about it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me, dan at obsoutpost.com. The brackets are available on our website, www.obsoutpost.com. And uh, always looking forward to your comments, guys. Thanks for watching.